live on day three of my webinar series where I'm working through some of the most common blocks I see with my clients. And obviously, you know, it's not like one to one coaching. When we're one to one coaching, we're really digging into you and your experience. But there are learnings that I can take from each of the experiences that clients have had, right, Through from my experience to help you overcome some of these common blocks. And wow, I mean, why would you want to overcome not feeling good enough? And it, the reason is that it, it is so interlinked in how you show up in your business. And you think about making a big impact you have to be able to play big, right? There's no playing small. If you want to make a big income, there's no playing small. And it's these, these feelings, especially when they're subconscious, that, that really hold us back. And often when I dig into those subconscious feelings, I'm not good enough. Just it comes up a lot. It comes up most of the time. And this one also in terms of timing, just checking on the Facebook, make sure we're on. In terms of timing is actually, it's, it's quite strange for me as a mum because I've been going through the experience of my little girl not feeling good enough, having real deep self-esteem issues at seven years old that seem to have come along with some bullying at school. But what, I, what it has, I guess, catalyzed me, caused me to look at is how young these belief systems get laid down, right? In terms of, you know, between zero and seven, not having any way of reasoning the experiences that we go through, having any cognition to, you know, understand them, I guess. You just take them as, as how things are and you start to see your world through that lens. And that's what we're going to talk to, to, to about today really is about how not feeling good enough is a affecting your action. And obviously our action in the present creates our results and what you can do to start to overcome that feeling. And like I've teased, I'm going to come at this from quite a different angle, an angle that you might not have heard before that might work in terms of that you know that switch to start playing differently um i've just been on a, a webinar actually around parenting and so it was interesting being reminded of how when you're a child the way that you learn you know through your experiences and there's those three things is about imitation so we will see without that cognition between zero zero to seven we will see how people respond to us, our relationship with a person, with experience. We'll see it, we'll imitate it, and we'll just believe it as well. And also, we'll also have like, um, the second way is, is obviously our experiences and what we learn. So imitating people, experiences we learn something from. And I know from my own experiences as a child, I learned that there was something wrong with me by the way that my mum responded to me, right? Hey, Michelle. Um, again, if you want, Michelle, if you want live coaching, drop in the chat. If you've got questions, I'll bring you on. Um, and then the third is those healthy habits. So just, you know, the repetition of healthy habits. On the flip side, if you were in an environment growing up where you had unhealthy habits and they were normal violence aggression scarcity then that becomes your normal right so the question always comes down to what made you you feel not good enough and how is that how is that showing up in your present um and just just to finish on the parenting thing my auntie sent to me once who is not a parent she had no children but she's very dear to me she sent me a Philip Larkin poem, right? And it said, your parents, they fuck you up, your mum and dad. They may not mean to, but they did. They fill you, you, they fill you with the faults they had and add some extra just for you. And this poem goes on and it's so, so funny, right? And it's going to lead, so that leads me to where I want to fin finish up in the webinar, how, you know, we do what we know best with what we have in the top at the time and based on our circumstances, which is what for me as a parent makes this inner growth journey so important. You know, I've got a baby ready to be born. I've got a four year old, I've got a seven year old. And 
I could, the one thing I can control is, is what I know, right? What I learn, the, the self-development I do, the spiritual work I do, the, the trauma healing that I do. I can control all of that. I can never control my circumstances, but I can, I can control how I respond and I can control that through growth. So this is important. Our feelings are messengers. If you feel that feeling of, um, I'm not good enough. It's, it's there for a reason. It's bubbling to the surface because it's, it's allowing you to close a chapter. And I've got a few clients at the moment who they really have been in that repetition of circumstances where the same thing keeps showing up and they keep finding themselves in the same patterns. And they're realizing just three weeks into coaching since the Unleash Your Legacy challenge, actually, that they, they are at the center of that, that there is something very key that they were meant to learn and they'd never seen that message before. They'd never seen the message in the mess. They'd just seen the mess. They just experienced the mess and the learning. You know, what they're seeing, the message, the feeling is a messenger. Understanding what that message is, is, is enabling powerful action, powerful change in their life. So where are my notes? So obviously a lot of clients come to me um impact driven entrepreneurs they're wanting to get visible they are wanting to get visible on social media and where this feeling of not good enough being not good enough shows up quite a lot is in that that social media visibility because they'll go to do a live video or they'll go to do a long copy post or they'll go to follow up with somebody who is engaged in their content and all of a sudden there's this niggling feeling and it's stopping them. And I know this, this niggling feeling intimately, right? It is that I'm going to talk myself out, out of this. I used to spend up to a week talking myself into going live because something in my head, no matter how much logic I had as to what I know, what I could share, you know, however much I could talk myself logically into why I should go live, the feeling underneath was that nobody wants to hear what you've got to say, Claire. You're not good enough. You're not a good coach. And, and that was debilitating. So the angle that I want to come at this for you is, like I say, quite different. And feel free to disagree with me. I would love you to interact and disagree with me. I'm keeping my eye on the, the Facebook comments. Um, but what if the truth is you're not good enough? What if you're just not good enough? And the reason that you're not good enough is because you're focusing on the gap between where you are and who you are, doing the best with what you have, what you know, in your circumstances. And your focus is on the gap. And the top of the gap is all of those expectations, all of that conditioning, all of those identities and all of those roles that you have taken on, picked up, decided that, that they are truth. And your suffering is right there in the gap. So what if you're not good enough by those expectations? You lay those expectations down because of the experiences that you go through. You, you get that conditioning from the experiences that you go through. You take on those identities, mum, wife, like what's the word, um, subordinate. You get that through the experiences that you go through and roles as well, roles, identities, same, similar thing. And through that gap comes that suffering and that feeling of I'm not good enough. And the truth is you are good enough. If you bring everything back to where you are and who you are and what has created that person and all of her, his value, everything that, that, that you have to give, you are good enough in whatever shape or form, with whatever flaw, with whatever, you know, lack that you see, you're still good enough. It's just creating that feeling that you're good enough through, through self-discovery is where it starts. And believing that you are unique, not broken, and understanding what the unique expression is of that, right? Which is, which is my superpower, working with people to understand, okay, this is you, this is your truth. Helping you to get to that place where you see that truth. Hey, Claire. Um, again, Claire, if you want to jump on for coaching, drop into the chat. I'll keep an eye on the chat. Oh, we have got a chat. Hang on. 
Oops, a second. just Michelle <laughs> saying awesome awesome yeah so Claire drop into the chat I've got the chat up now so if you want coaching you've got questions drop them in um getting you to that place like that is my superpower getting people to that place of understanding their truth recognizing their own superpowers and feeling confident in them believing they're good enough to realize those soul goals and really seeing what that soul goal is because there, right there in the focus in what you have in the presence, there is no gap, right? It takes the gap away. The suffering is in the gap. Well, the gap goes away because you're no longer comparing your, your, yourself, your expectations of yourself to some screwed up idea of yourself that, that is not your truth. Your truth is who you are with what you've got. And you became that person through what you've been through, right? And so the journey in terms of visibility online is to get to a place where you feel okay to talk about it, warts and all. I'm gonna share this in my long copy post today. I'm gonna to share an experience with a current client who has like, I mean, it would, it would, it makes you shudder to hear of her past story and to hear of what she went through to get to where she is and to hear of her fears of being visible with that story. But the authenticity is the only way, right? The authenticity is what ultimately is gonna connect you to that perfect client because they're gonna hear you like you're speaking their language. You're that one person online that's actually speaking to them in a way that they feel it themselves and they're gonna to wanna to connect with you. They're gonna they, they're gonna trust you. They're gonna trust you because you've shared the journey, not just of where you are. You're not just another one of those inspiring people online who's got everything, you know, sorted. You're showing them that you were where they are, and you're showing them the journey to close the gap, right? So you don't enable them to get let themselves off the hook because that's what inspiring people do. They enable people to let themselves off the hook because they sit back and they go, well, "I can never do that." And in terms of your sales, it creates an uncertainty, right? It creates an uncertainty in themselves, in you, and it makes the sale difficult. And ultimately that sale is gonna serve them. So you have to get to that place of certainty. You have to get to that place of authenticity, which means getting over those visibility wounds that are born out of that fucking feeling. I am not good enough, okay? So, this is not about trying to be something that you're not in all of those expectations in all of those roles in all of those identities that's that's something that you're not that's not your truth. The journey is to discover the truth. And that comes from your story right so let me just check in i'm trying to keep this short so i'm trying to keep on track. Um, so yeah so yesterday we talked about self discovery. We talked about self-discovery being the place to start, digging into the soul goal kit and actually utilizing those free, free resources, right? Your values, your joy, like getting really connected to your heart and your, your purpose, making that start to understand yourself. Who started with that? Who has started with that? I know both of you have been, who are on here live, have been through the soul goal kit and started to use the tools and they're powerful right because you start to see you for what you truly are which is unique and you start to see your story and the elements of it that do make you an expert because nobody else has been through that through those experiences nobody else got themselves through those experiences and learn those coping mechanisms and and those ways to overcome you know i think it was yesterday's live I think it was yesterday's live. I did so much, so much yesterday in terms of coaching and guest expert trainings that I'm not sure where I said this, but maybe I think I did say how in your mind, your mind is more familiar with failure than it is with success, right? Because we've all failed in some way. We've all been the kid that didn't pass the test. We've all been the kid that got on the bike and fell off. We've all been the one in the relationship where he screwed it up or, you know, we've all failed but we've not necessarily succeeded to the point of it being outside our wildest dreams, right? So in our mind, our mind fears that. It fears that success because it's unknown. 
and unknown in any sort of way is danger, which catalyzes those autonomic processes that cause self-sabotage wired by the experiences that you've had already, right? Michelle says, the resources are an amazing tool. I'm starting to see my story pains as a potential lesson. That's like music to my ears. It's, it's, it's your experience, it's your, it's your truth. And it's, like I say, it's that, it's that true self. It's that true expression, that authentic expression that will, will get you, that will get you customers. It will get you partners. It will get you relationships that are collaborative and to your benefit, to a mutual benefit. If anybody's got a few moments to jump on my Instagram at CW underscore full underscore circle, I shared this, this cool quote that I found um, by somebody else actually about finding your voice and how and why you have to find it. And I also shared some of the, the feedback pictures of feedback comments that I've had in the last week, you know, saying to me about like, the, the impact basically of being so truthful you're impacting people when you get truthful when you're able to go into that story and lift the elements out of it that are powerful without all the emotional emotion attached because it's the emotion attached to the experience that ke keeps you stuck in the feeling of that experience so it's keeping you stuck in the past right you're just repeating it's repeating the past and so there will be trauma around where that feeling of not being good enough came out of there there will be trauma not by the dictionary definition of trauma which is hit by a bus or kidnapped by aliens whatever grandiose idea of trauma trauma is any experience which at the time you were emotionally overwhelmed by so again i think it was yesterday i said um perhaps this was the guest expert training i don't know it's the the multitude of experiences you would have had growing up that would have overwhelmed you emotionally especially because of our biological connection to our parents as well we're looking for eye contact we're looking for physical intimacy these are physical biological needs that are not necessarily there in every parent child relationship right which on a physical you know instinctive level is traumatic it's like abandonment so it's important to to see those memories as opportunities to learn to to see your story as an opportunity to grow and to be able to serve people and and be able to when you're getting visible be visible about every single part of you right every single part of you warts and all as long as you took the learnings from the warts, right? <laughs> and you can share those learnings. So I think where some people get stuck, I got stuck is the victim mentality of the world is happening to me. Everything's going wrong. Why does this keep happening to me? How come I'm still broke? I just want somebody to, 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 to reach out and fix this, to, to give me some funding. Entitlement. That is part of victim mentality where you just feel entitled to that loan or that um, lottery win or that funding and you're giving your power away. You're giving your power away. The next level of consciousness is to step into that power and take your, your personal responsibility. But there's, this, there's a midpoint, right, which again... I got locked in between the victim mentality and personal responsibility that is liberating. There is the personal responsibility level of consciousness where you're still wired by the subconscious programming of the past that drives you into almost a fight mode. You're gonna do this yourself. You're not gonna take help. You're not gonna waste money on investment. You're, so it's like a midway, right? Where you're still reacting to experiences of the past, money is scarce, so you better not invest it. Um, you know, you can do it yourself because God damn it, you're still fighting that person who said that you couldn't. And then there's another shift in consciousness, which I know again, both the incredible ladies on this call today who are live have both had that shift into, there's gotta be an easier way than this. I, I, I get it. I understand now that these feelings are blocking me in a, in a, in a monumental way. And I, I'm ready. I know I can't see my own blind spots. 
I know I can't tap into those parts of my subconscious that that are blocking me and I'm, so I'm open to help and I'm open to see the vision of hustle being something of the past like my hashtag no hustle hustle is when you're not leveraging your time you leverage your time through presence because presence expands time and we're able to stay in the present by letting go of the anchors to the past and stopping worrying about the future right so it's this journey of consciousness and I think you know I mean I'm still on that journey right I want to be I want to be Buddha sat there at the top of consciousness with with never being pulled out of the present and my and my true power and purpose but it's it's a journey and the most important thing I think is that you start um so in that visibility in that showing all of you people are going to get to know you they're going to get to trust you and they're going to really understand their need for you because you understand your need for you right in that journey of self-discovery in understanding your own value in understanding the power of your own personal story and your experiences in the power of healing those past experiences to take the wisdom into the present you are you're not gonna you're not gonna you're no longer gonna feel not good enough you're gonna feel like superwoman or superman you know you're gonna feel like i've got this I went through this for a, pers a purpose. There is purpose in that pain. And I trust myself. I trust myself. I trust my product. I trust my service. I believe in all of it. And I believe in my capability of it, which is at the center of everything. Because you could have the crappiest product in the world, to be honest. But if you're at the center of it, you still, you're still going to sell it. You know, it's you. It's the belief in you, the belief that you are good enough. And letting go all of those stories that tell you you're not. Um, part of this journey is getting clear on your message. And again, um, so in my coaching call this morning, um, I brought up, I actually didn't get a chance to finish telling the story, which is why I'm going to put it in my long copy post because it got me thinking, right? It's like the girl that I'm working with that has this really difficult past story that potentially if she goes, if she goes online publicly with it, it's going to cause a lot of back a backlash. Um, and, and she's got a lot of fear around that, but she's just at the start of the program you unleashed. So she's just putting together the story, understanding, you know, how putting the jigsaw puzzles pieces together, as I call it. And what I shared with her is that, you know, there is there is a real power in being vulnerable and understanding what you have to do to become vulnerable. I used to not want to share the story of being raped because I had that belief, and this is what we talked about yesterday, I, I felt shame. I felt a lot of shame. And it was because I believed that there was something to feel ashamed about. And now I don't believe there is. I don't believe that I had any responsibility in what happened to me. You know, and it's like, and it changes the ability to stand up in conviction of your message that we all have a right. We all have a, you know, a physical right, an emotional right, a, a vocal right, nobody can take that away from us and you have to as part of that journey of, of, of self-discovery really get clear on you know your, your message and to be able to stand in it with conviction and I had a really interesting experience um, in COVID so one of my one of my values now is to to not give my power away I made a pledge to myself after losing a reality show last year in May last year, where I recognized coming off that, that experience that I'd gone on there to win the coaching prize because I was still in that kind of, um, you know, not the victim mentality. I'd shifted into the personal responsibility of I'm gonna do this myself, but I'm not gonna pay for top level premium coaching support. And so this show offered that as a prize. And I'd started to see, I was like, okay, there, there, there seems to be a pattern here between the level of coaching, the price of the coaching and the results that you create. The freebies, you get kind of this result, the top level, you get this result. And I wanted this result, but I hadn't let go of the scarcity that allowed me to invest in, in it, right? So I walked off this show and I, was, I had an epiphany. I was like, you've got to let that go. Like you are not going to shift anywhere until you start like committing and, 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 you know, taking that leap of faith, which is when I actually up leveled my coaching. I, I, I did that for myself. Right. And 
what what happened there is like this I, I sort of laid down a silent pledge I was like I'm never going to do that again I'm never going to believe that I'm not enough I'm never going to believe that I'm not a, a powerful creator in my of my life I'm never going to give my power away and of course during COVID-19 <laughs> good old global pandemic that just dropped into our universe earlier this year I did have a couple of really quite difficult months and and it sort of got me to this place of we have in here in New Zealand, we had a wage subsidy and I started to have this internal battle, like my scarcity, my remaining scarcity mindset sort of called me to, we'll just take the wage subsidy, but my truth, my values, my, my new principles, nothing saying that taking the wage subsidy for anybody else was wrong, but something that I believed in, something that was so true to myself that you know, was telling me not to take it and to trust that the universe always provides, that abundance is absolute truth. And that was something that I had to learn from that struggle, right? I was not to react to that struggle and panic and take a wage subsidy or a small business loan or whatever. I had to respond by understanding, you know, the, the, the pain, <laughs> the, the purpose in the pain. And, and I, and I didn't take the wage subsidy, but I did drop into a group and I asked if anybody else had had a similar experience, you know, were, had they had a similar journey, had they decided not to, um, to, to reach out for this wage subsidy. And the thing is, my story was powerful to this as well, right? Because my story had been one of being let down also when I'd needed something like the wage subsidy. I was made redundant at six months pregnant with my last daughter and there was nothing, you know, that was like, there was nothing, couldn't even, it was sort of like, and, and again, it was that enforcing, giving your power away to something and outside of myself. And this, this comment in this group or this post in this group, it caused outrage. Like there must have been 200, 300 comments of people calling me not compassionate, not um, understanding, all sorts of very, very bad curse words of, you know, how I just, you know, I was apparently attacking people who had made the decision. And I, I went to start to justify myself to say, actually, it's not that way at all. I would never, ever make anybody wrong for, for making their own decision, right? It's just, this is my journey. This is my path. And actually, I'm in the wrong for seeking outside of myself for validation for it. I should have just made the decision, stuck to the decision you know, and I got booted out the group. And so what happened then is I started to, to receive messages. So vile, awful messages from people, just they wanted to keep telling me what they thought and how much they hated me. And so I decided to go live on my personal page and I decided to share the background too, um, to why I made this decision and why I'd wobbled with it. And what happened was really eye-opening. Yes, I had a few people from the group come over to my personal page to check me out and start screenshotting my actual post into the comments just to remind me what I said. But then there was more people who have been following my journey since it started, who have seen my growth, who understand my values, who understand that I'm not just saying you should be a powerful creator of your life. I'm going out and teaching people how to do it. And, and I can show them that journey of not being that powerful creator to being in that victim mentality, to being where I am right now, which is self-sufficient and confident and trusting that the universe provides, right? And so what happened was, and what was beautiful was that there was all these comments of support. And it, it just, I thought about the story today and I was, you know, I was going to share it on my, my coaching call and the, there wasn't time, but I'm going to bring it into my personal post today, my long copy post, because it's so, it was so eye opening, right? That when you discover your message, when you discover, discover what you stand for, when you discover what is important to you, then, and you share that it's actually way bigger than any wart in your story. Nobody's going to focus on that part of your story that you were in, you know, a victim mentality in the first place. The powerful thing is that you've overcome. And the powerful thing is people wanting to understand how you overcome because you have something that they don't have. And, and you know, and that's, that's hard for them. It's painful for them. They feel the pain of where you were and they want to understand and feel the, 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 the ease, the pleasure, the joy, the fulfillment of where you've got to. 
Um, so this requires digging into your story. So Michelle, like starting now to see the story, the pains, we're gonna learn the damn lessons. You know, we're gonna actually understand all of it and be able to, to, to communicate it and also heal it so that you can share all of it as well. So we have to heal all of it to share all of it. Um, so to finish, basically my journey of this did, it, it did happen kind of inadvertently. It happened writing my book. Um, if you've been on my masterclass talk that talks about feelings like I'm not good enough, my emotional biohacking, which is what I work with, that's what I do with people, it began writing a book. So through writing this book, um, I, I started to, I guess, go back into some of these experiences and be able to see them from a whole new perspective, to be able to take a completely different meaning from them and feel differently about them. And in the process of reading this book, I, sorry, writing this book, I also got to, to read this book which is called The Writer's Journey. <laughs> and this talks about, like there is like a sequence, right? When you're digging into, into your personal story, there's a sequence. And it's the sequence that we see in, in Star Wars, in all the good movies. Um, it, there, there is a way of picking through your story. And it starts with the call. So you feel this calling to, to have more, be more, do more than you have right now, right? And as you start on that journey, what happens is, is something bad. Something bad happens and you end up in a pit. You end up in a hole. You end up potentially not for the first time, it might happen repeatedly, it did for me, in a, in a, in a rock bottom, right? And so the only way from rock bottom is up, right? So you start the search. You start the search to be able to meet the call, but you have to get over the pit, right? And that's what leads to your breakthrough. And so your story is just like that. It has those pieces, Claire, Michelle, both of you, I think were on the Unleash Your Legacy Challenge where we actually did that activity, right? We actually went through creating your story. And really what it is, is it's creating, it's joining the dots to create the big picture. And at the center of that is you, your ability to create that picture through your action, right? And that action has to be unlimited unlimited not limited by i'm not good enough not limited by i don't have enough qualifications not limited by i, I don't have enough money i can't afford it. it has to be unlimited action and so in terms of our brain and our big brain supercomputer you think of all if you can think of all of those experiences that you're going through that you've gone through in your life as data what you want to do is use your soul brain. So the data triggers the survival brain, which gets you in those negative patterns of behavior and thought and self-sabotage. But you can, take a con you can make a conscious decision to go and shift into the soul brain through the feelings that you create on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is learning what it feels like to, to be in your joy. This is learning to, to recognize what it feels like to be in, in your deepest fulfillment this is learning what it feels like to work, you know, in alignment with your values and your soul goal and your purpose. And that triggers the soul brain, which is where your power lies, right? It's where your reasoning is, your vision is, your powerful decision making is, and your, your innovation is. Your greatest ideas are in your soul brain. And your soul brain is basically consciousness. So everything, in my mantra being everything is possible, everything is possible in, in that state of consciousness, when you're making conscious decisions, not being driven by subconscious feelings like I'm not good enough. And so when it comes to that action, there is three types of, of action, and that is that your consciousness is in charge. You're in that soul brain and you're deciding and you're taking action. But then there's also that unconscious feeling that drives kind of unconscious action or subconscious action just turn that back on um and and that's where we get into those kind of you know negative patterns and then there's just an unconscious unconscious impulse which is something that has so bad has happened that you will just turn away and run and it's an impulse right so we need to get into that consciousness and the consciousness is a powerful place it usually 
takes up about 5% only of our day, that consciousness, everything else is subconscious. So we really want to be in control of that, that subconscious programming. And we want to be the ones programming it, right? Programming it with those new beliefs. I am good enough. So I hope that that was helpful. I was trying to think of, um, I was trying to think of an activity to leave you with today. And, and, and I, I, really, I really couldn't just in the sense that, you know, it's, it's, that that feeling of not good and be, not being good enough i think the only thing that's going to take it away is healing um because you're neutralizing the charge of whatever experience in terms of emotions that laid that belief down in the first place and i think everything else that we try to do that doesn't go that deep just kind of you know numbs it a little bit takes it away kind of um temporarily and so yeah, I don't, I don't want to leave you with like an activity that that's not going to shift this for good. So what I want to open up to anybody um, on the Facebook group, not live, because you guys are already in, you're done. It's like, it's, it, it is done, is apply for a breakthrough call because we can look into how you overcome those feelings that are, that are holding you back. We can make a plan. We can understand where you are in your journey of, you know, growth, growth of your business. Are you at the point of launch? Have you launched? Usually I've worked, I'm working with people who they've, they've been doing this for a little while, right? And they just keep finding themselves not in that place of income or impact that is truly fulfilling them. And so we can talk about that. We can understand where you're at and understand where you want to get to and understand how we close that gap. So I only have very limited spaces now available for breakthrough calls. Um, my program is, is almost completely at capacity, but if any of this has resonated, then please do drop a comment or, or message me directly and I will give you the link to apply for a breakthrough call. There's a short application form just to make sure that we're a, a fit to talk to each other also gives me some background of where you're at so that we can make the best of the time on the call. And I would, I would love to talk to you about how you heal all of you, to share all of you, get over those visibility wounds and get your powerful message out there, helping people and, and generating that income that you deserve as well. So I hope that that was helpful. Um, there is comments on the Facebook from 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Rachel says, that's exactly how I feel. But somehow I feel like pretending I'm, pretending I'm where I'm not is suppressing my feelings. Well, like, Rachel, let's talk about this. Like apply for a call. Um, there's nothing to lose. You definitely will have breakthroughs. Um, I will drop you a personal message. And thank you, Michelle and Claire for being on live. I appreciate both of you. Michelle, I'll see, speak to you very shortly. And I hope everyone has a beautiful rest of day. Okay, I'll just check there's no questions. No, okay, bye-bye.